Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Pastor Bramick at Holy Shepherd Lutheran Church in Hazlitt, Texas. It is Saturday, October the 28th. It's time for our daily devotion. And I'm Deaconess Intern Claire. And we're going to be doing the noon devotion, which is in Lutheran Service Book on page 296. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. Evening, morning, and noon. I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. All right, and we're moving on to Matthew chapter 19 today. And we're starting at verse 1. When Jesus had finished saying these things, he left Galilee and went to the region of Judea, to the other side of the Jordan. Large crowds followed him, and he healed them there. Some Pharisees came to him to test him. They asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason? Haven't you read, he replied, that at the beginning the Creator made them male and female, and said, For this reason I, a man will leave his father and mother and will be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let man not separate. Why then, they asked, did Moses command that a man give his wife a certificate of divorce and send her away? Jesus replied, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because your hearts were hard, but it was not this way from the beginning. I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife except for marital unfaithfulness and marries another woman commits adultery. The disciples said to him, if this is the situation between a husband and wife, it is better not to marry. Jesus replied, not everyone can accept this word, but only those to whom it has been given. For some are eunuchs because they were born that way. Others were made that way by men. And others have renounced marriage because of the kingdom of heaven. The one who accept this should accept it. Then little children were brought to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. When he had placed his hands on them, he went on from there. All right, so the Pharisees now are beginning to, to test Jesus as they see him do these miracles and as the, the opinions of the crowd uh, grow stronger and stronger and Jesus' following grows larger and larger. So the Pharisees are beginning to feel the heat that people are looking away from them to Jesus. They feel their power is on the line and, and they also have this sense that Jesus is an imposter. So they are testing him now by 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 giving him these situations and asking him what is, uh, what is God's view on this. And so the, the one that they raised today is about divorce. Uh, apparently, uh, from the text we learned, that it was easy in that time for uh, seemingly a man to just divorce his wife for any reason, and that this could really be used uh, by people of that time to uh, get in and out of marriage, or for men to get in and out of marriage as they pleased, and this would leave the ones who were divorced, the women who were divorced, as, um, you know, potentially without any resources, depending on whether or not they had children. Uh, and then older children at that, because if they were younger children, the younger children could not uh, provide for, for their mothers. So uh, this really is, is very protective of, of women, as Jesus makes this uh, proclamation as well as of marriage itself, that, that marriage is thought or is, is to be regarded as something sacred, that, uh, you know, divorcing for frivolous reasons or even for potentially serious reasons, but without, uh, without it being biblical reasons, um, is, is to sin. And, and so Jesus is uh, encouraging people to have this um, higher, um, higher understanding of marriage. That the, that the marriage bond is to be in place unless it is broken uh, by marital unfaithfulness, as he says here, where the spouse cheats on the other spouse. Uh, in 1 Corinthians, Paul would add that uh, also if, if the unbelieving partner leaves or abandons 
the, the believing partner, then the believing partner is, is not bound. Um, but we do have a calling to try and protect our marriage that uh, if we do feel like things are going south in the marriage, that, that you know, you would seek counseling, uh, that you would talk to me as the pastor, that you would uh, look for a third party, uh, ask a family member to help. Um, because marriage is to be regarded with, with such a high esteem that it, it, it should be protected and it should be held uh, in honor uh, above all things. And, you know, today the culture gives us a different set of expectations and instructions about this that, you know, well, if you don't love the person anymore or things get tough or you feel like this is not the right person for you, that you should just frivolously leave rather than waste your time and, uh, and not be happy. That's kind of the culture's uh, set of directions that it's giving for everybody. And a lot of people in the church have sort of um, signed on to this. And, you know, as Christians, we look at things differently, and that includes and especially um, involves marriage, that marriage is to be a lifelong union between husband and wife, and that uh, it, it should be, uh, like I said, held in honor so that it is protected at all costs. I mean, these are the instructions of, of Jesus, and uh, you know, marriage obviously has very spiritual dimensions to it, and so involving uh, the church for more than just a marriage day is really, uh, you know, what Jesus is calling for. Uh, we do remember in other places in Scripture that marriage is a picture of the relationship between Christ and the church, that Jesus is the bridegroom, the church is the bride, Jesus loves the bride, sacrifices himself for her, and uh, the bride in turn um, looks to her husband and, uh, you know, submits to her husband and in the same way that the church uh, does so to, uh, to Jesus. And, and in this way, the two are um, interdependent upon each other. The husband is dependent upon the wife. The wife is dependent upon the husband. That each of them fulfills a, a role that uh, neither one of them can switch and do. Uh, but in this way, you build a strong marriage, you have a good relationship, uh, a relationship that is meant to glorify God um, and uh, raise children and support, you know, the ministry of a church and, and do all of these things. And that in this way, um, people come to realize the sacrifice that, that Jesus made for them and, um, and, and how we look to God and are dependent upon him uh, for all things. All right, we continue back in Lutheran service book on page 296, and we continue with the versicles. O Lord, have mercy upon us. O Christ, have mercy upon us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord Jesus Christ, at this hour you hung upon the cross, stretching out your loving arms to embrace the world in your death. Grant that all people of the earth may look to you and see their salvation. For your mercy's sake we pray. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Everyone, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. All right, well, Claire, what announcements do you have for us today? Um, well, we have our fall festival today at 4, so come on out and support the preschool. Rain or shine? Yes, it is raining. <laughs> um, <laughs> we also have Sunday school tomorrow at 9.15, followed by worship at 10.30. All right, and then confirmation is happening tomorrow night, Sunday night at 6 p.m. Uh, we do have a very special all-congregation meeting tomorrow after service, so we would like to invite you to stay after and hear um, some updates about our finances. It's only going to be about 30 minutes. And then don't forget, tomorrow is Reformation Sunday. So uh, 560 years ago, Martin Luther nailed the 95 Theses to the, to the Wittenberg Castle Church door and um, set forth the Reformation. We'll be talking about that tomorrow, and uh, hope that you can join us for that. Monday night, pastor's class resumes at its normal time of, uh, of 7 p.m. And then we're also collecting uh, various food items for Christ Haven. Um, a list was published in the email newsletter this past week. Uh, we'd like to get these in by the second Sunday in November. 
I don't believe we've gotten any donations in yet, so uh, please start to bring them tomorrow or the following day so that we can make some deliveries here by mid-November. That's all the announcements I have. We will continue with our devotions on Monday. God bless the rest of your day.